In this video, I'm going to take the clip art we created in the fall design series and put it together to make a seamless repeating pattern. I'm going to begin with a six inch square and we're going to place the designs on there in such a way that when it is tiled to the left, to the right, up or down, there is never a break in the design. Let me show you how that is going to look. I'm going to come to the layers panel and I'm going to hide the extra pieces and just stick with the tile. I'm going to select my tile and I'm going to hold down the shift and the option keys and I'm going to drag to the right and then when they intersect I'm going to release my mouse and then I'm going to do the same thing again. Hold down shift and option, drag to the bottom, hold shift and option, drag to the left, hold shift and option and drag up and you can see that in every direction the design is seamless. So let me delete these and we're going to move over to a new file and I'm going to create first of all my six inch square and I'll use the rectangle tool keyboard shortcut M I'll click on the artboard to open up the rectangle dialog box and the six by six measurements are exactly what I need. So I'm just going to say OK and then I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and I'm going to move this up here a little ways and then I'm going to go over to the file that has our fall designs in it. And I'm just going to lasso over all of these and I'll copy them using the keyboard shortcut command C. Now let's go back to our working file and then I'm going to paste these in by using the keyboard shortcut command V. Now these are way too big for my little six inch square so I'm first going to deselect them and I want to just select the jack-o-lantern. I'll hold down my shift key and select the candy corn and our fall art brush and I'll come up to object transform scale and I'm going to scale these 30 percent and I have uniform scale checked I also don't want the corners to be scaled but I do want scale strokes and effects and then I'm going to just say okay now they look pretty small but we're going to use several of them so that's going to be fine next I'm going to select the flower and I'm going to go to object transform scale and for the flower I'm going to scale it at 20 percent and I'll leave all the other settings the same and say OK. We'll move that down here and then for fall I'll go up to object transform scale and I'm going to scale fall to 60 percent and then say OK. Now I'll start out with placing my jack-o-lantern but I want for this design to work for more than just Halloween so I'm going to remove the face from my jack-o-lantern. I need to come over to the layers panel. I'll twirl down and here is my jack-o-lantern and so I'm going to select the mouth and I'll press delete. I'll select the nose and press delete and I'll select the eyes and press delete here as well. Now then I'm going to select my pumpkin and I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to just drag the first one here. I'll put another one over here and honestly this is trial by error on where you place these. Get another one, put it about here and another one move him over here now I think I'm going to rotate a couple of these I'll get the rotate tool keyboard shortcut R and rotate this one here I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V select this upper pumpkin get the rotate tool keyboard shortcut R and rotate that slightly and then I'm going to Get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. I'll select fall, hold my option key down, drag it over here. I'm going to rotate it, keyboard shortcut R. And then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. Hold down the option key and drag this here. Let's get the flower and I'll 
hold down the option key and I'll put a flower here and I hold down the option key put another one here and hold down the option key and put another one down here and I'm going to be readjusting these in just a little bit but this is just kind of giving me an idea now I'll get the candy corn select it hold down the option key drag one of these over here let's put another one down in here somewhere and maybe fill in one here now I need to make an art brush I'll use the little design that we created I'm gonna open up the brushes panel I'll just drag and drop our art brush into the brushes panel and I'm gonna select art brush okay I'm gonna put floral for a name and it's important to check scale proportionately and then just say okay now I'll get the paintbrush tool keyboard shortcut B and I have my art brush selected here and I'm just going to draw out some of the patterns and remember I created this to draw from the bottom up so I'll do kind of like this maybe one here put one here maybe one here and I think I'm gonna stop for now now I know it looks like I have some empty spots but that's because everything that is overlapping outside of my six inch square has got to repeat on the other side so I'm going to just do that right now so I'm gonna select all of the items that are overlapping at the top and I'll just lasso over these and that selects only these objects and I need to make a copy and move them down here and place them exactly in the right spot to do that I go up to object transform move now immediately when I opened up the move dialog box you maybe saw my objects kind of take a little bit of a jump and that's because they respond to whatever the numbers are when that box opens don't worry about moving those just deal with the move dialog box and it'll take care of itself I don't need a horizontal move and so I'm going to type in zero then I'll tab down to the vertical option and I'm going to type in six because that's the size of our square and then I'll press copy and I now have these three items copied right here and if you'll notice the parts of the objects that were overlapping at the top are now on the bottom of our square let's do the same thing with fall I'm gonna select fall I'll come up to object transform move and this time we want a horizontal move and so I'm going to type in six and then tab down to vertical and type in zero and then press copy now I have fall here and fall here and the overlap is perfect okay we have a pumpkin and a piece of our artwork here so I'll select these two items and then I'm going to come up to object transform move this time I need a horizontal move but I need it to move to the left and not the right so I'm going to type in a minus six in the horizontal box there's no vertical move needed so I'll just press copy and now I have all of this design here in place I actually think there's not a whole lot that needs to be moved I'm gonna juggle it around just a little bit and I think other than that it's gonna be just fine okay I'm finished with these clip art items over here so I'm just gonna delete them before I crop the design and get rid of all the excess around the outside of the square I need to make two really important changes to the elements that are inside the square so I'm going to select my square and go to the layers panel and I'm going to twirl down here and I'll lock that square because I don't want to actually change it now I'm going to select all of these items and I'll come up to object and expand appearance now while they're still selected I'll go back up to object again and this time I click expand make sure fill and stroke are checked and say OK now let's give a background color to the square before we edit everything I'm gonna unlock that layer 
I'll come over to the Properties panel, select the square. I'll click on the Fill icon, and I'm going to give it the CMYK color 01095 Then I need to remove the stroke because I definitely don't want a stroke repeating in my pattern. To crop this design is surprisingly simple. I'll select my square. I'm going to copy it. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Command C. And then I want to paste the copy on top of everything. In order to center it, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command V. And now I have this extra square on top of the designs and on top of the bottom square. Now I will select everything and I'm going to come over to the Properties panel in the Pathfinder area, click on the ellipsis, and I'm looking for the Crop tool. When I click on Crop, all the excess is gone and I have my swatch. It is as simple as that. I'll select everything here on the board and I'll group it using the keyboard shortcut Command G. Now, in order for this design to actually function as a swatch, it has to be placed in the swatches panel, which I already have placed in the right side of my workspace. To get the swatches panel, go up to Windows and then click on Swatches. With the swatches panel open, I'll select my design. I'm going to just hold my mouse down and I'm going to drag it into the swatches panel. And it is ready to use. Now then, let's move this out of the way and I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and I'm gonna drag out an ellipse, click on our new pattern swatch, and there we have our design. Now if I wanna make this smaller, all I have to do is use the size tool, and that's keyboard shortcut S, and I'll start dragging down, and as I do, I'm gonna hold down the tilde key, which is the key next to the one on your keyboard, and shift so that I can scale it evenly. And I'll go down to about 41% and release my mouse. And now you can see that I have a much smaller design, but it's still seamless. The fun thing about making your own swatches with your own designs is that you control everything. And one of those things you control is the background color. I chose a yellow background for our swatch, but you can leave it invisible in the background and it even becomes more versatile for you. So let me show you what that would look like. I'm going to select our swatch here and I'll come over to the layers panel and I'm going to twirl down on the swatch. And because we did all of the expanding of the appearance on our clip art earlier, we have a lot of different objects. So I'll use the little slider bar. I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom because I know that my square was at the back of all the designs. I'll hold my shift key down and select each one of these yellow layers. And once I have them selected, I'm going to group them using the keyboard shortcut Command G. Just to make sure that I didn't get any of my design, I'll click on the little eyeball and check everything out. I haven't disturbed any other part of the design, so I'll go ahead and turn that eyeball back on and click on this layer group. And then I'll come over to the Properties panel and I'll click on the Fill icon and I'm going to come up to the top and I'll click on None. And that makes my swatch now have an invisible background. And I'm going to open up the swatches panel and I'll drag this one in and drop it here. Now we have a second swatch. I'm going to select our ellipse and click on the new pattern swatch that we just made. It is applied to the ellipse and it even kept the same sizing as the previous one. Now in order to put a background on this, I'm going to press Command C to copy the ellipse and then I'll press Command B. That places a copy of the ellipse behind the first one and with it selected, I'll come to the Properties panel, click on Black, and now I have a black background for my fall design. Now I'm going to hide this ellipse because I want to show you one more thing and that is how to apply your swatch 
to a stroke. So I'm going to get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M. I'll click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box, and then I'm going to type in 7 for the width, press tab, type in 5 for the height, and then press the return key. And I'll get the selection tool to move that back over here in the center. I'm going to come to the properties panel. I'll remove the fill color. Then for the stroke, I'm going to assign the yellow background fall design, and then I'm going to increase the weight of the stroke to 46 points. I want for the design to be inside the stroke boundary, so I'm going to click on the word stroke, and that brings up the stroke dialog box. Under align stroke, I'm going to click on the second icon, which aligns the stroke to the inside. I want to add a black stroke around the frame, so I'm going to have to convert this stroke to an object. So I'll come up to Object, and down to Path, and Outline Stroke. And now this is considered an object. You can see that my design is showing up in Fill instead of Stroke. And I'll get the Size tool, and that's keyboard shortcut S, and I'll begin to drag to the center. I'll hold down the tilde key, which is next to the 1, and the Shift key, and resize this to about 48%. Then I'm going to get the Selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and now I have a frame inside my 5x7 rectangle. To add a stroke around the frame now, I'll go to the Properties panel, click on the Stroke icon, select Black, and then I'll just click on the artboard to deselect it. And you can use this for a border for a fall postcard. I hope you've enjoyed this fall design series as much as I have, and that you've learned some new things about Adobe Illustrator. Be sure and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a single episode. I'll continue to provide tutorials and show you how to use all of the different tools in Illustrator and make some fun things. This is an amazing software, and we've only scratched the surface. So thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now.